This presentation builds upon concepts introduced in the cylindrical and conic projection presentations which are the first two parts of the Map Projection RLO series. This RLO presentation explores azimuthal map projections in greater detail. There are three primary developable surfaces for projecting the spherical Earth surface on a two-dimensional map plane a cone, a flat plane, or a cylinder. This presentation focuses on the family of azimuthal projections, which maps the Earth's surface onto a flat plane. These figures show the polar, transverse, and oblique orientations of an azimuthal projection. The polar orientation on the left results in simple geometric properties of the graticule. Meridians are radially symmetric straight lines which converge at the pole where the pole is the center point of the planar projection surface. As with the conic map projection, the terms polar and normal aspect can be used interchangeably. The case of an azimuthal map projection describes whether the planar surface is tangent to the sphere or intersects it. The secant case to the left results in a line of intersection and the tangent case shown to the right results in a point of tangency. When the plane intersects the globe in polar aspect, the standard line is a line of latitude or standard parallel. Standard lines have no distortion from the projection process. Map legends for polar aspect, secant case as a muthal map projections, should therefore always include the latitude for the standard line. These figures illustrate the general distortion pattern for an azimuthal projection in polar orientation. The color bands show that the lines of equal distortion are concentric around the point of tangency or the center of the circle of intersection. Distortion increases away from the point of tangency or the standard lines, respectively. The upper figure shows that for the tangent case, no distortion is found at the pole while distortion increases when moving toward the map boundaries. For the seeking case, no distortion is found along the standard parallel, while distortion occurs both when heading towards the map center and heading towards the outside. Before looking into further properties of azimuthal map projections, introduction of the term geodesic is essential. On any spherical surface, the shortest path between any two points is part of a geodesic line, which is also called geodetic, orthodrome, or great circle path. In this figure, the Earth is split into two hemispheres by a plane containing the center of the Earth and two surface points, in this case, Tokyo and Perth. The intersection of the surface of Earth with this plane defines a great circle. The two great circle arcs between the cities have different arc lengths. The geodesic is the shorter great circle arc between Tokyo and Perth. Since great circle paths are the shortest connections between two points, a map should ideally present them as straight lines. This would make it easy to draw and measure a geodesic. However, only a few projections can do so, and usually only under special circumstances. The first distinct characteristic of azimuthal projections is that all great circles crossing the map center are drawn as straight lines. Using Fort Lauderdale as the map center, this concept is illustrated in the left figure which uses an azimuthal equidistant projection. Meridians and parallels spaced 30 degrees apart are overlaid in blue. To find, for example, the shortest flight route from Fort Lauderdale to Cape Town, South Africa, 
This can be easily achieved by drawing a straight line between these two locations, as shown with the yellow line. As an example where the great circle arc is not mapped as a straight line, we use the Mercator projection shown to the right. Here, the great circle path between Fort Lauderdale and Cape Town is plotted as a curved line. This makes finding the shortest connection between two points on the Earth's surface more difficult. The second distinct characteristic of an azimuthal projection is that it presents true directions or azimuths from the center of the map. The azimuth from a point of observation to a second point is the angle measured between north and the minimum distance line to the second point. In other words, it is the angle one would have to turn at a point of observation when first facing north and then facing the second point. Let us assume that we measure at Fort Lauderdale and azimuth alpha for Cape Town, as shown in the figure to the left. Alpha remains unchanged on an azimuthal projection when centered at Fort Lauderdale, as shown to the right. This table lists five common azimuthal projections. In addition to the two general properties described previously, each of these projections has another property, such as being conformal or equidistant. Azimuthal projections can be grouped into perspective and non-perspective projections. The first three projections are the group of perspective azimuthal projections, whereas the last two projections belong to the non-perspective azimuthal projections. Let's have a look at the first group. Some projections have a direct geometric interpretation. Light rays that are projected from a source intercept the Earth, and according to laws of perspective, plot the traced features of the Earth onto a developable surface. The crucial point here is to have a point as the light source and light rays that follow straight lines. The light source can be located in one of many positions with respect to the reference globe. When using a plane as the developable surface, three perspective azimuthal projections are commonly used. The figure shows the schematic cross-section of these three selected perspective azimuthal projections. None of these can present the whole Earth, but only a hemisphere or less. In the mnemonic projection shown to the left, the light source is located exactly on the sphere center. Therefore, the projection can only present less than one hemisphere at a time. This projection's unique property is that each great circle, including the equator and all meridians, is mapped to a straight line. This property makes it easy to find and the shortest route between any two points. In the azimuthal stereographic projection, the light source is located on the opposite side of where the plane touches the reference globe. It is the only conformal projection among the azimuthal designs. It also preserves circles, no matter how large. Because scale is greatly stretched far from the center of the map, azimuthal stereographic maps are commonly constrained to the hemisphere opposite the source point, or an even smaller region. In the orthographic projection, the source of light is moved to a point at infinity. This projection shows the Earth as seen from space infinitely far away. Its severe shape and area distortion near the map border prevents it from general use for world maps. Instead, it is more often used for insets. The Earth can be mapped as seen directly from above from an elevated platform such as an airplane or orbiting satellite. The projection used to achieve this effect is called the General Vertical Perspective Projection, which is an azimuthal projection. This projection is similar to the orthographic projection, except that the fictive observation point is a finite distance rather than an infinite distance away from the Earth's surface. 
With this projection, straight lines converge at an arbitrary convergence, or zenithal point, V, that is on a line passing through the center of the Earth and perpendicular to the projection plane, which is usually tangent at the Earth's surface. If the zenithal point is above the mapped surface, this projection reproduces a view from air or space directly downwards, bounded by a circular horizon H, which is limited by the curvature of the globe as shown to the right. For these images, the Fort Lauderdale Research and Education Center in southeastern Florida is the mapped center point. Each graticule consists of meridians and parallels that are 5 degrees spaced apart on the globe. As the distance between the Earth's surface and the zenithal point increases for the different figures, the resultant effect on the map projection can be seen by the changing size of the graticule. At 10 kilometers above Earth, which is typical flying height of a commercial airline, the view is restricted to less than 5 degrees of the graticule. As the zenithal point height increases to 100 kilometers, the whole state of Florida can be seen. At 330 kilometers, which is the approximate orbit of the International Space Station, the view expands to include a majority of the southeastern United States and the Caribbean islands. Approaching the orbit of a typical GPS satellite at 20,200 kilometers, most of North America and a large portion of South America is imaged. The second group of projections besides perspective projections have no geometric interpretation or real perspective process. Instead, the group of so-called non-perspective or mathematical projections is described purely by mathematical formulae with a design that gives them some desirable properties. As an example, we look first at the azimuthal equidistant projection, which opposed to perspective azimuthal projections can map the whole world. A special property of the azimuthal equidistant projection is that true distances from the center point of the projection to all points are shown if the distances are measured along straight lines. This means that each of the lines has a constant scale. For the polar aspect shown to the left, this property can be validated by measuring the same distance between adjacent parallels, hence the name equidistant. All other measured map distances are incorrect. The second mathematical non-perspective projection is Lambert's azimuthal equal area projection. It can also map the whole world. However, the boundary of the worldwide map exhibits strong shape distortions. As opposed to the azimuthal equidistant projection, radial scale is not constant. This means that along straight lines starting from the map center point, map distances shrink compared to distances on the reference globe when moving towards the border. This effect can be seen in the left figure, where parallels get closer together towards the border, just enough to preserve areas. Each of these azimuthal projections is developed in a similar manner by placing a plane target to the map center, the North Pole, on the reference globe. All five projections shown here were created with the same scale at the map center. As a map projection that is tangent at only one point, the scale factor on these projections is only true at the North Pole and greater than one at all other locations. The difference in scale factors across the five projections is evident by the different spacing of the mapped parallels that are 10 degrees spaced apart on the globe. Note, for example, the difference in spacing of mapped parallels between the mnemonic and the orthographic projection. The same five azimuthal map projections from the previous slide are shown here with the Fort Lauderdale Research and Education Center as the map center. 
This orientation, referred to as the oblique aspect, is the most commonly used aspect for azimuthal map projections. A couple of azimuthal properties mentioned previously will be emphasized here. All meridians, which form the north-south lines of each graticule, are clearly straight lines only in the mnemonic projection. This distinction is much easier to see with an oblique aspect than the polar aspect shown in the previous slide. Further, the conformal property of the stereographic projection makes this the only azimuthal map projection where all lines of latitude and longitude meet at 90 degree angles. This figure provides another comparison of these five azimuthal map projections by visualizing the location of parallels that are spaced 10 degrees apart. All projections are in polar case using the same scale at the map center. Equatorial zones are shown in red and polar caps in blue. Some distinct patterns can be observed. First, only the two non-perspective azimuthal projections map the whole world indicated by the two blue bands. Oppositely, the three perspective projections, which are stereographic, orthographic, and mnemonic, map only one hemisphere or less. Second, it is shown that the equidistant projection is the only projection with a constant scale along radial lines from the map center. For all other projections, the distance between parallels varies with latitude. A numerical example is explored here to illustrate the difference in map distances between different azimuthal projections. This and the next map were created with the Fort Lauderdale International Airport as the map center. Both maps visualize the great circle routes between airports as a straight line in navy blue with true direction from Fort Lauderdale. The non-perspective equidistant azimuthal projection used here preserves the true distance from the map center to all other points. For example, the true distance between Los Angeles and Fort Lauderdale is 3,747 kilometers and can be measured correctly along the straight Great Circle route. This map uses the mnemonic projection which results in extreme distance distortions. For example, the distance between Los Angeles and Fort Lauderdale from the mnemonic projection labeled in orange measures too long at 4,244 kilometers compared to the true distance of 3,747 kilometers labeled in navy blue. This large distortion of approximately 500 kilometers serves as another reminder to avoid the mnemonic azimuthal map projection for measuring distance. True distances from Fort Lauderdale to Mexico City and New York were distorted with the mnemonic projection by 70 kilometers and 50 kilometers respectively. Clearly, the distortion grows rapidly over longer distances. This slide summarizes the presentation. It started with an introduction to distortion patterns of azimuthal map projections. Distortions are smallest near the point of tangency and the line of intersection. Next, we looked at two distinct properties of azimuthal map projections, which was followed by several examples of perspective and mathematical azimuthal projections with their distinct properties. A small scenario at the end demonstrated how map projections can result in extreme distance distortions, which stresses the importance of being careful when choosing a map projection for a given project task.